Safety is one of the most important reasons to consider very seriously molten salt reactors. And this is because of the clever implementation that was demonstrated in the molten salt reactor experiment of the freeze plug and the drain tank. This is something that perhaps was not getting enough attention in the early 1970s. Now we know that if we want to have the public accept nuclear reactor technology, it has got to be very safe and it has got to be something that is easily explained to people. Now I've explained the safety basis of the molten salt reactor to people many times and I haven't had anyone who's unable to get it. Frozen plug? That's it. That's <laughs> it? A flattened pipe with uh, electrical heat, resistance heat on that one. So you invented the frozen plug room. A small port in the bottom of the reactor. And to keep the port plugged, they had a blower that would blow cool gas over it. So there was a little plug of frozen salt there. Well, if the power went out, the blower turned off and the heat would melt the frozen plug. And guess what? Psh, everything would drain out of the reactor into this drain tank. And the difference between the drain tank and the reactor vessel was the reactor vessel was not meant to lose any thermal energy. The only place you wanted to lose thermal energy was to give it up in the primary heat exchanger. The drain tank, on the other hand, is designed to maximize the rejection of thermal energy to the environment. And one of the hard things about designing a nuclear reactor is designing it to not lose any heat while you're running it, but then to turn around and try to keep it cool if something goes wrong. So there are two conflicting things. The great thing about uh, liquid fluoride reactors is you can design them completely separately. You can say, here's my reactor and it's designed to make heat, and here's my drain tank and it's designed to cool in all situations. If something happens where that fuel drains away from that graphite, criticality is no longer possible. The reactor's subcritical, fission stops. And there's no way to restart it without reloading the fuel back into the core. This is such a remarkable feature. And it really is unique to having this liquid fuel form and to having something that can operate at standard pressure. You can't do this in solid fuel. If you do this in solid fuel, it's called a meltdown. Making solid nuclear fuel is a complicated and expensive process. People recycle cans, they recycle papers. Why not candles? I say we put a bin out, let people bring back their old drippings at their convenience. It's like those bags that say, I used to be a plastic bottle. We could have a bin that said, I used to be another candle. By weight, a paraffin candlestick and gasoline contain about the same amount of energy. Why don't cars run on paraffin wax? Because the inside of your car might need to look like this or like this. What process do we run chemically based on solids? We don't. Everything we do, we use as liquids or gases because we can mix them completely. You can take a liquid, you can fully mix it. You can take a gas, you can fully mix it. You can't take a solid and fully mix it unless you turn it into a liquid or a gas. I shall never forget my wonderment as I stood next to the unshielded steel cans only a few days earlier had been mixed with millions of curies of radioactivity. We were particularly proud of this because that tiny chemical plant was large enough to decontaminate the core of a one gigawatt molten salt breeder. Thorium does not have a volatile hexafluoride. You can fluorinate it and fluorinate it and fluorinate all you want and it will not change chemical state. It will stay thorium tetrafluoride. Uranium, on the other hand, does have a volatile hexafluoride. And this is why many of us feel that the uranium thorium fuel cycle is a perfect fit with a molten salt reactor. This same trick doesn't work, by the way, in uranium plutonium fuels. They both have volatile hexafluorides, and so you can't undergo a separation using the simple technique of fluoride volatility. 